What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido, Candido Training. HQ. And today I wanna to go over a very simple change that I made to my back squat recently. And it made a significant difference despite how small this change was. And it was that I simply went from focusing on pushing hard off of my heels in my Olympic lifting shoes to just focusing on pushing off of my midfoot, the middle of my foot, that's all. And that simple adjustment made me way more comfortable and way more explosive. And uh, what I wanna show here is, I'm showing footage from when I was pushing hard off my heels still, and I was having just a bunch of inconsistent workouts. And then I finally figured out what actually happened is I had a good set that I videotaped from the side and my bar path seemed a bit off, like it was too far forward. And then I went back into some older videos and I remembered that I kept trying to push hard off of my heels, but then I do remember the fact that the bar path would get thrown a little bit forward coming out of the hole. And I also noticed that on a lot of my PR sets, I was pitched a little bit more forward than normal. I was almost shifting off of my heels a little. So now it's easy to just interpret that as a mistake, but we also have to look into why are we doing something under a heavy load that it's odds are it's a more advantageous position, which is why I'm getting into it. A couple examples are probably my two best sets of my entire life. When I squat 495 for four high bar, and then when I squatted 525 for three low bar. On both of those, I noticed I was getting thrown more forward, but I was more explosive out of the bottom still. So then I just tried it out, tried shifting a little bit more forward in my squat and just seeing how it affects things. And as I said, it immediately changed it where it felt much more explosive and it's actually what I did going into my 405 for max rep set and obviously that worked out very well and now I'm gonna try to you know crush squats a lot harder here and try to hit some PR somewhat soon. So this is why I actually went back and sadly I had to delete the video I had uploaded on why everybody should wear Olympic lifting shoes which was essentially saying to just sit back hard on the heels and to take advantage of the raised heel and first of all, the title itself was already over ambitious, I knew. And then now looking back to where I just realized that I, I was wrong, that that wasn't, at least for me, that's not an effective cue to try to sit back as hard as possible on my heels. So I, one of the things I want to talk about is that it made it very easy for me to delete that video because I'm an athlete first. Because you know, I'm always looking for the biggest advantage I can have to get stronger over time. And I'm not just gonna try to argue to be right and to try to always defend myself as my first priority. Last thing, I wanna shout out a smaller YouTube channel that I think deserves some more attention, and that's Titanium Fitness. And the reason why I wanna shout him out is because I noticed he was sitting back heavily, kinda of like how I was when he's squatting, and I told him about this, about how I'm changing to trying to push more off my midfoot, and he said he used to push off of his heels hard and then on the outside of his foot hard as well. And now he's changed to pushing off of his midfoot and then still, of course, on the outside of his feet. And he said it feels much stronger. And he's a good example for some of the taller lifters. Because I've noticed, you know, some people can't relate to watching me because I am a manlet. You know, I am well built to squat. I will admit that. Whereas he's at the opposite where he has very long femurs. He's a taller guy. So for some of you taller lifters, it's better, I think, to get that visual of someone who also looks like you as well as just looking at people like myself who may be more naturally built to squat. So that's it guys, I wanna add that in my opinion, these types of adjustments, the very small nuances that have a great effect on you individually, those can be the most important bits of information when it comes to maximizing your, your strength, your performance. And it's not necessarily these theoretical debates on which type of periodization is the best, you know, the, which dogmatic circle you wanna essentially entrap yourself in as far as high frequency, low frequency, this program, that program. When it comes down to it, what matters the most is learning from your personal experience and finding the cues that are most effective for you. And that's something that takes just years and years and you're always going to be adjusting. I mean, I made this adjustment after years and years of squatting over and over again and I'm still learning something every time I lift. So make sure to be observant and adjust. That is the key, in my opinion, to being a national level lifter and possibly a world level lifter, is they're all very observant and they're all constantly adjusting to the information they get from their workouts. 
So that's it, guys. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Man, fuck the shooting star. Biggie. Second, I bit him, I get him, I hit him with the venom. Ain't no need to pretend I'ma never do it. I knew it, I've already been doing it. I do it for the street, for the fan, for the life. Anybody that's gang related.